Welcome. Next, I have the pleasure to introducing Mrs. Tulia Exxon, President of the IPU. Madam President, please take the floor. Speaker wa bunge la Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania na Rais wa Umoja wa Mabunge Duniani IPU, Mheshimiwa Dr. Tulia Axon amesema kuwa vijana wengi duniani wanakabiliwa na changamoto mbalimbali ikiwemo elimu duni na ukosefu wa ajira hali inayowasababisha kukosa matumaini kujiingiza katika ualifu kuandamana mitaani na kuhama nchi zao kwa kutafuta maisha bora Dr Tulia ametoa kauli hiyo leo tarehe 12 Septemba 2024 wakati wa ufunguzi rasmi wa mkutano wa kumi wa wabunge vijana wa IPU unaofanyika jijini Yerevani nchini Armenia na kuhudhuriwa na viongozi wa mabunge na wabunge vijana kutoka nchi wanachama wa IPU. Aidha amesisitiza kuwa katika nyakati hizi zenye misukosuko duniani, mahitaji ya vijana hayapaswi kupuuzwa. Ameimiza viongozi na wabunge kuhakikisha kuwa wanatengeneza mazingira rafiki kwa vijana na kuwapa kipaumbele katika kupata elimu bora na fursa za ajira. Mkutano huo umefunguliwa rasmi na waziri mkuu wa Armenia, Mheshimiwa Nicole Pashian. Elia Jackson Lupembe News Update Media. Mr. Prime Minister of the Republic of Armenia, Mr. President of the National Assembly of Armenia, Mr. Secretary General of the IPU, and of course we are all looking forward to receiving the President of the IPU Board of Forum of Young Parliamentarians, who, as we have been informed, will be joining us uh, in the course of the day. Dear colleagues, I am deeply honored to address you today at the Global Conference of Young Parliamentarians for the first time as IPU President. It is a pleasure to be welcomed so graciously in this beautiful city of Yerevan, where ancient history and modern aspirations intertwine. It is only fitting that we are marking the 10 years anniversary of this important conference in one of the world's oldest nations which also boasts the world's highest proportion of young parliamentarians. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Prime Minister, congratulations. I wish to extend my sincere thanks to the National Assembly of Armenia for providing such an outstanding setting for this conference. Armenia is not only leading by example on youth empowerment, but also on its hospitality and its commitment to fostering dialogue among nations. Mr. Speaker, we thank you for your hospitality and we have all been very well received and well taken care of. Thank you so much. Over the years, Global Conference of Young Parliamentarians has become a unique platform for young parliamentarians to make one particular message heard loud and clear, that there is no democracy without inclusion and there is no inclusion without the participation of young men and women. I am so pleased to now be a part of this conference. Today, as we gather in this esteemed hall, we find ourselves at a moment that demands our full attention, our collective wisdom, and our unwavering resolve. The world is beset by conflicts that threaten to undo decades of hard-won progress in education, employment, and equality. On every continent, young people continue to endure most profound hardships, whether it is in Africa, where young people are taking to the streets to demand a better standard of living, or in Asia, where only last month a government was toppled. Especially in these tumultuous times, the voice and needs of young people must not be ignored. As leaders, and parliamentarians, it is our duty to ensure that no generation is overlooked. Over the next two days, we will discuss the importance of education and employment. As a former lecturer and an educator, this topic is very close to my heart. Let me, bear, uh, let me be clear. Education and employment are not mere privileges. They are fundamental rights and cornerstone of stable and prosperous societies. They empower individuals to contribute meaningful to, the com to their communities, to innovate 
and to lead. In times of crisis, they become even more critical, providing the resilience needed to prevent society from descending into chaos. Yet, today, education and employment are crumbling under the weight of conflicts, natural disasters, and economic upheavals. Millions are being displaced, stripped of their right to learn and work, and jeopardizing their futures and stability of our societies. If we allow a generation to be lost, we face a future marred by deepening inequality and widespread disillusionment. The cost is not just human potential wasted, but entire communities and nations weakened. Education and employment give hope. Without them, young people may drift into the shadows and the seeds of despair can take root, threatening to unravel the very fabric of our societies. This is why the urgency of our mission has never been clearer. We need to bring education and employment back to the center of our politics. We must double down. It is high time that access to education for all is guaranteed and delivered. This includes free and compulsory education for those in crisis situations, supported by flexible curricula, language programs, and teacher training. As more people are on the move, we also need to ensure that they can be productive workers in new environments. This requires greater investment in job investment and placement services, language assistance, and recognition of skills for newcomers. But above all, if we are to craft laws and policies for young people, we need young people at the heart of designing these initiatives. To echo the words of IPU's young members of parliament, no decisions should be made about youth without youth. So how are we faring? Aside from success stories like Armenia, we have much work to do. Only 2.8% of members of parliaments are under the age of 30, despite half of the world's population being in this group. Parliaments are not just legislative bodies. They are platforms for change. And to embody this change, they must reflect the people they serve. The more voices they are, the better our policies become. This is not just a moral imperative. It is the surest path to delivering to the people. We see this with youth in politics. And we also see this in another group, women. We know from IPU research that women members of parliament tend to prioritize social welfare in their work. And this is this has a positive impact for policies on education and labor. When, we, when more women are in political sphere, these areas receive increased attention and societies prosper. Yet women's leadership and political participation remain insufficient. Less than 25% of the world's members of parliament are women. And when it comes to young women, the situation is even worse. Only 1.4 of of members of parliament are women under 30. This represents millions of voices unable to provide the solutions we need on education and employment. Of course, the same can be said for many other groups that face underrepresentation, marginalization, and even discrimination. People with disabilities and the impoverished, minorities, and many more. We must tear down the structural and legal barriers they face, not only to protect their rights, but also because they need, we need each and every one of us to contribute to better political decision. As the famous saying goes, leave no one behind. Dear colleagues, to enhance education and employment with all these rich perspectives, we need to firstly adapt education and employment support services to meet the needs of all segments of society, genders, and abilities. Education is the seed from which our leaders grow. Secondly, design institutional reforms for our parliaments, uh, so our parliaments are accessible to all. This can include quotas, fair campaigning, financing, and supporting new aspirants in political parties. Thirdly, reform discriminatory laws. 
wherever they exist. It makes no sense that one can be old enough to vote or serve in the army, but not old enough to run for office. Harness diverse voices in between elections through citizen outreach and parliamentary channels like committees and caucuses. Only when inclusion becomes a reality can we have education and employment that meet the needs of all. Only then can we transform lost generations into generations of opportunity and rekindle the flame of hope. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking from one generation to the next, please know that we are committed to working with you towards this shared vision. In partnership, let's ensure no generation is lost, that education and employment are preserved, and that young people are empowered to lead. I thank you for listening.